a proper healthy cod. Codling, I keep saying cod, I'm just excited. But this is going to be the perfect candidate for the catch and cook. I'm going to get this battered to some homemade chips with it. And we owe it to you as it's the first codling of the season. Well, I'm going to do a catch and cook with this cod, which is right here. I haven't portioned it yet. The plan is I'm going to portion it in a second, show you the portion in the way I do it, show you how I mix up the batter and we'll get this fish cooked. I'm doing it with some homemade chips. Get the camera up here. The homemade chips there. Tin of mushy peas. It's just gonna be basic. We've got here is 100 mils of water and 100 grams of plain flour. You can do all sorts with a batter. You can add beer to it instead of the water. You can add baking powder. You can use soda water, which is what I would normally do. There's some of it there. Basically, it's just fizzy water. It helps to give the batter a bit more lightness and crispness. You want as much bubbles in the batter as possible. Otherwise, it's just a bit of a plain, boring batter. The more bubbles in it, the more crispy it is. But for this video, I'm doing it as basic and as simple as possible. Because the things I'm using, you'll have at home. It's just 100 grams of plain flour, like I said, and 100 millilitres of water. I do my batter mix quite thin. I ate that doughy thick batter that you get, I like it light and crispy. Some parts of the fish might not be completely covered, that's just my personal preference. What you can do is, is add a little bit more flour to the mix and it thickens it up so the fish is covered more and you'll get like a slightly more doughy batter like you'd probably get in the chip shop. But me personally, I like it quite thin. We'll get this batter mix now and get the chip pan on and we'll part cook these chips. We'll take them out, cook the fish put the fish on a plate and then finish the chips off because I'll make the chips a bit more crispy. Right, while the chip pan's eating up, we'll get this flour mixed in the water. The water's been in the fridge for the last couple of hours. You want it really cold. It helps with the mix and it helps with the battering process. That is actually mixed now. You can mix it for longer to get a few more bubbles in it if you want to. I'll show you how you test it now. You get on the back of a spoon like this, rub your finger down the spoon, and you don't want it technically joining each other, you want it to part, just like that. But I might add a little tiny bit more water to this. As you can see there, the consistency look. That'll be totally fine. Like that. But that's the best way to test it on the back of a spoon. Cover the back of the spoon, give it a wipe, and it parts and stays parted. It's not running back together. This will be a safe bet for battering your fish, and it'll have a nice coating on it. What we'll do now is get this batter into the fridge while the chip pan's heating up, so we can part cook these chips ready. Well, as you can see here, we've got the cod fillet. I'm just gonna portion it. I reckon. Tell you what, we'll do a decent sized one. We'll portion it there. This'll be the filly I'll be battering, right there. And then we'll do some fish fingers with these and the other fillet we have. It's a nice chunky fillet if you look. Anyway, we'll batter this piece of fish. What you wanna get now is some plain flour. This is what you'll be dipping your fish into before it goes into the batter. It helps the batter to stick to the fish. So, what I generally do, you can season the fish directly or you can season the flour. So I've got a good pinch of salt in here, a couple of pinches of salt, and then some black pepper. And basically, to give it a mix around with your fingers. This is the simplest way I've found of doing the battered fish. And this way, it's evenly coated, you don't get a spot with a bit too much salt or a bit too much pepper. And that'll be ready like that. We can just dip the fish straight into that, drop it into the batter, and then into the chip pan. Right, I'm gonna batter the fish now. Just lay the fish into the flour, press it in. You wanna make sure it's covered very well. You can put flour on top, get it on it. And if you've got a split in the fish like this, that's fine. 
just make sure it's got flare in the split otherwise the batter won't stick coat it well like this to coat it everywhere make sure the sides are done make sure the ends done which it is shake off the excess flour so it's like this And put it into the batter. I've only got a small bowl, but press it into your batter. This can get messy. And try and just hold the tail nowhere else. Really get it in there. And then get it into your chip pan without making too much mess. Don't just drop it straight in because it'll stick. The fish is too big for the basket. And that's it now. The fish is cooking. You want it on 170 degrees. It's been in there now around two minutes. What you want to do is flip the fish over. As you can see, this is holding together fine, and that batter's good. Just like you get in the chippy. And don't have the oil too deep either. You only want it just covering the fish. Just like that. Well, that's the fish cooked, as you can hear. That's nice, light and crispy. It's just the way I like it. I've got the chips in now, which have just been the second cook. Make the chips nice and crispy. I usually put the chips in, pre-cook them for about two minutes, maybe two and a half. Pull them out. I cook the fish. The fish is done. I'll leave it to rest for a second here and I'll finish the chips off. And that's the plate done. What I'm going to show you here is how thin the batter is. As you can see, look. But super thin and crispy, just the way you want it. I don't want to pull the fish apart, but just to give you an idea of inside, if I can do it without destroying it. You can hear that. You look there. There's flakes of meat in there. That's amazing. You cannot beat it. It's perfect. And there it is, all finished. I will put cooking times in the description, but it's only gonna be rough guard times. You need to go off it yourself, just in case you've got a thicker piece or thinner piece of fish. But you can't beat that. Home battered cod, which was caught yesterday. Homemade chips and then some mushy peas. It's perfect. And the chips, if you can hear that, nice and crispy, because they've been cooked twice. Have a look at twice cooked chips, or blanching chips if you don't know about it because the chips are perfect when you do that that's nice and crispy anyway i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you picked up some ideas or tips from doing this or you attempt it yourself if you can give the video a like subscribe to the channel and now i'm going to bugger off and eat this